Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time for a hot topic. And this one says, Serap wants 36 governors and Wiki to account for trillions um, for the FACC. That's the fact trillions. Now, the Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project, Serap, has urged Nigeria's 36 state governors and the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja, Mr. Yensom Wiki, to provide, in quotes, our organization with documents on the spending of trillions of FAC allocations received by their state and the FCT since 1999 and to widely publish any such documents. Serap's request followed reports that the federal, well, the Federation Account Allocation Committee FAC disbursed 1.123 trillion to the federal, state and local governments for March 2024 alone. Now joining us to have a conversation is Dr. Law Mefoy. He's a forest, forensic and social psychologist. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, good morning. Thank you for hosting me. Yes. All right, so we're talking about 1.123 trillion naira for just March 2024 alone to these states. So we're seeing them getting a lot of money because that's a lot of money, if you ask me. And then we're not sure of what are, what these monies are being used for. Um, we're not sure of the development in this state. We're not sure of, you know, a better economy. We're just not sure of how they're spending this money. So we're seeing these allocations. Um, they go to Abuja every month. They get these allocations and it just goes into thin air. Now, what do you think of Serap's request? The fact that Serap is asking them um, to be more accountable and asking them for transparency now, not just for March 2024, but dated even all the way to 1999. So Serap is asking for all of the documents um, for each state, each local government, even um, the, the federal capital territory. What do you think of this request, sir? Yeah, I think uh, the request uh, by Serap um, it is in order uh, and uh, really timely, um, long overdue, if you ask me. Mm. Uh, but I have some worries. The worries is that uh, I have checked and I don't see the mechanisms in place, particularly the laws needed to compel the governors to act um, along uh, the line um, prescribed by Sarah. Mm -hmm. For example, you know, unless EFCC uh, begins to make a, such a request, th there is no um, operational procedures that really compel uh, each uh, departing governor to um, account for uh, monies received um, from the Federation account. Um, for example, uh, one had expected that um, every governor um uh, as part of uh, the handover should give uh, a, a statement uh, uh, of account of uh, the income and expenditure within uh, his tenure but there is no such uh, rule anywhere and um you you now find the efc uh, making a, a such a demand based on uh, some specific uh, petitions efcc works on petitions and uh, that is not what should give us the kind of uh, result that is uh, being uh, demanded by Sarah. Sarah is uh, about uh, accountability. Yes, and um, they've gone to court over several issues, dozens of issues in the last uh, couple of years. But again, they, uh, to what effect? What are the outcomes of uh, these uh, legal battles uh, mounted by Sarah? So I think that we need to be a bit more intentional here. We need to get uh, some mechanisms in place. Uh, but first, before I come to my uh, prescriptions of what I consider appropriate uh, steps that should be taken by Serap and other concerned Nigerians, I want to point us to the uh, foundation that has uh, made the accountability at state level uh, virtually impossible. One is a constitutional issue. Uh, Nigeria is a federation and the states are federated units. And uh, to that extent, it's very difficult for the federal government to uh, compel uh, the states to account for monies. And um, like I said, you don't have a, uh, a, a enough uh, legal framework to compel this. Uh, and that is one level of it. 
Then you look at um, the three tiers of uh, government, the executive, uh, the judiciary, and uh, the legislature at state level. These uh, three arms are fused in the governor. They are practically not uh, existing. The governor is everything. Even uh, the local governments are also emasculated. In Nigeria, as we speak, I am not sure that we have um, up to six um, states where local governments are run by elected um, uh, 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 local government chairman. Yeah. Uh, what you have is what we call a transitional uh, committee uh, chairman appointed directly by the governor. That is not the contemplation of uh, the constitution. Now, if you have the governor um, appointing people to run the local governments, don't forget that local government is considered a tier of government in Nigeria and yeah. receives a direct allocation from uh, the um, from the FAC federation account, and they are not allowed to directly um, expend the money uh, released them um, to the local government because the same constitution created what you call the Jack account. The Jack account is a, a joint uh, local government and state account. And the governor is the chairman of the, of the committee disbursing this money. So at the end of the day, the governor will simply call uh, the people he appointed and then um, give them money to uh, fix a salary and uh, maybe another one or two million naira to take care of uh, security and uh, their own uh, uh, comfort. And that, that's it. Uh, so you discover that, as we speak, the, 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 the local government as a tier of government in Nigeria as contemplated by the constitution is practically uh, non-existent. And this uh, is a lacuna created by the Nigerian constitution itself. Now, you look at uh, the state legislature that is supposed to oversight the executive uh, arm of government in the state. How do you arrive at uh, the people who are honorable members, the so-called honorable members of the uh, State the Houses of Assembly. They are almost uh, handpicked by the governor during uh, the leadership and recruitment process. Those who the governor give a ticket uh, are the ones that eventually go to the house, and out of them, he, he, the governor also chooses the principal officers, particularly the speaker. In other words, the governor is just the emperor. There is no, there is no checks and balances. And because there is no checks and balances, you now find the governors, the governors are on their own. They, 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 they superintend the finances of the state, disburse money as they wish, and nobody says anything. So at the end of their tenure, you know, problem naturally would uh, uh, emerge. Like Sarah is now asking, account for the money. And many of them are not prepared to account for anything. You can see what is going on in Kogi. Uh, the white uh, lion, what I should be called a white rat now, the way he's running around, you know, he's refusing to submit himself to EFCC. He's the same account. He is running running away from accounting for the eight years of uh, uh, managing a uh, Kogi state as governor. And it, is, it doesn't stop there. Practically all the governors are running from accounting for the Money, monies released to them during their tenure, particularly the local government uh, uh, funds. The local government allocation, it, it, it cannot be accounted for by almost every governor in Nigeria because of uh, the scenario I have uh, already painted. So, if you look at this, uh, this, uh, this uh, background, that you don't even have uh, state legislatures that can be on the neck of the governors, and they, they don't wait until they leave office and they begin to raise the, the alarm. The, 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 the state uh, legislators ought to be alive and uh, well, the, the, the dealing with uh, one of the three principal functions of, uh, of, uh, the, of the legislature, which is oversight. The oversight is done when when uh, the, uh, the work is being done. It's for you to, be, to, to ensure that um, the executive arm is uh, carrying on according to uh, the prescriptions of the Appropriation Act made by the legislature 
and signed into law by the executive and the governor or the president. But this is not what you have. So, you know, coming back to um, the demand of Sarah, you have already shown you the difficulties where and why uh, the governors are not in a position to um, even account for, for the money and the absence of labor framework and the uh, some uh, mechanisms that will make it mandatory. Just the way you have a uh, code of conduct bureau say you have to declare your assets before and after you leave office. The governors must add, must, you know, there has to be law insisting that every governor, every president should attach, should attach the financial, uh, the, the financial report of his tenure. And that will form the basis of investigation. But if um, we now have to wait for petitions to come, then there is a problem. Let me uh, avert your mind to what uh, Governor Oti of, um, of uh, Abia State has done. He called in one of the, the three best the forensic uh, uh, investigating uh, experts in the world and then uh, gave them the assignment of a uh, of uh, doing a forensic audit of uh, the Abia, Abia, Abia State account. And they came away with very shocking, very shocking revelations. For example, for example, you will see that billions, billions upon billions were paid out by the former uh, governor of Abia State for non-existent uh, projects. For example, Abia, Abia State, uh, uh, Abia State uh, uh, Airport. There is no there is no airport in called Abia State Airport anywhere, either on the drawing board or in the in the physical. Nothing. But then billions went into that, and the EFCC hasn't said anything. You know, so you, you really wonder because even the forensic report is available, and the, the EFCC what. Um, has happened there with uh, the OT report is not the first time. Mm. Because if you recall, when uh, Wiki was the governor of River State, Wiki instituted a panel on uh, his predecessor, Chibika Maichi. They mm. came out with a report which the EFCC refused to work on. Till today, nobody has investigated Amaichi. You know, so you can understand that much of what is going on is politics, you know, those are the optics. Mm. The, 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 the EFCC is not free to really do the work as it ought to do. EFCC should be shielded from politics completely. You know, maybe uh, they may not uh, investigate the president, but there is nobody else in Nigeria that should not be free to investigate. Mm. That's the truth. And again, like I said, there is very serious need to amend the EFCC Act to provide for uh, the, 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 the governors to account for uh, the, the, the monies they receive from the federation account. They have to. Okay, so let me just chip let me just chip in here a little bit because you said you know maybe they can decide not to investigate the president. But I remember that when Trump was the president of the United States of America, he was being investigated. In fact, they tried to impeach him. I think he was even being impeached, um, you know, as at that time. So even the president, as long as you are not given some level of accountability, we should be able to ask questions. These are not, the investigation is not just to throw you away. The investigation is just for more inquiry, for more information. We want to know, you know, what uh, this money is for. And I, I was just wondering that in other climes, right, you would see this accountability just ooze out from the leaders why is it that in nigeria it, it's different we have to ask for it, it we have it to be different for it. it's different because of the the 1999 constitution which has uh, created uh, the president uh, of nigeria um and made him the most uh, powerful individual in the world as a matter of fact the nigerian president is more powerful than the american president mm. in actual fact and the governors are even worse. The governors are not under any form of check. Not in the, because within the state, I've already told you that the three arms are fused the one person. The mm -hmm. judiciary, the legislature, and the executive, they, they just mean one thing, the governor. That's all. So the governors carry on like emperors. 
Mm. They are not under any form of uh, uh, oversight. Nobody can check them. The Constitution does not allow uh, any such check. The, re the leadership recruitment process does not allow the governors to... Uh, um, it, 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 to does, it does not allow what you call level playing ground for people uh, that will become legislators to emerge directly from uh, the electorate. The people you have there are those put those handed over the party ticket by the governors. That's the problem here. So they don't go there with any capacity to ask questions. Mm -hmm. They are just there. If they are just they are just there. They don't do anything because the law, the way they got there. Um, uh, is through the governor and they are there at the mercy of the governor. So they do the governor's bidding. The Piper Single. If you come to the center, it's virtually the same thing. Mm -hmm. If you look at the National Assembly today as constituted, is it the Senate under, under a budget that can check it? You know, how? Mm -hmm. how right, so, 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 Doctor, how, how, do we, how do we do you know, demand for this accountability now i know sarah yeah. is asking for it there's cso's as well that you know demand accountability from our leaders so if you were to give some appro appropriate um steps on what sarah can do or other cso's can do um how would you advise you know the cso's in nigeria they, they are not um, they're not working as they ought to Including a setup, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to say, setup has uh, has uh, been uh, running around with the uh, lawsuits. The question is, the judgments they secured, who enforces them? Mm. They, 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 there is no enforcement. If you get judgment against the police, who will enforce it? Against the army? Against the president? There is no enforcement. So these are problems, and that is why I said that we need to go back to the law itself, because it, it is the legal framework. If, uh, if you amend the law to uh, provide that the governor must attach um, a, a financial report in, uh, you know, to his uh, handover note, it becomes, it becomes uh, uh, both procedural and a, 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 legal, uh, a legal framework, which will form the basis for any kind of uh, legal ch challenge. But as of now, there is no such basis. And that is why the AFCC is working only on petitions. Because there is nothing that compels the governor in our laws to submit the, 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 the account of the state when he or she is leaving office. And that is why I said that that is the first thing that must be done. We have to provide the legal, the appropriate legal framework so that uh, organizations like Serap and the uh, individuals who are concerned genuinely will have the basis to really carry out because now, if they do, if they do not account as the Sarah Bay has has um, demanded, what is the consequence? Mm. I have, we have seen a we have seen a, a many many automatums, you know, issued by Sarah and others. The automatums expire; that nothing happened. But if you have a legal framework that says that this is what must be done, if you give such automatum. And uh, it, it is not complied with. You go to you go to court based on the law on the law to to compel the governor to do something. Do you know that some of these governors don't even uh, provide any handover note? Mm -hmm. They don't. They just walk away. That's the problem. You know, so you can say that the the situation is a uh, uh, um, that of a, a system that was not really uh, conceived to succeed. Nigerian system is a peculiar mess, and the uh, people are free to do whatever without any consequence. And uh, the EFCC is overwhelmed, only interested in the uh, cases that would create the impression that they are working. Mm -hmm. the, the, the ICPC is, is practically not there. You, you can say that the, the two major um, institutions that should, that should uh, uh, fight uh, corruption, they, they are ill-equipped and mm -hmm. uh, politically motivated. They, 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 are not, uh, they are not free to work, as far as I am concerned. Otherwise, they would have, they would have thanked uh, Governor Oti for providing the forensic uh, report on his uh, predecessor. But they said nothing. They've not said anything till today. 
So that will show you that they are only interested in some peculiar cases. It may probably to um, pander enough to whoever for to whoever is the is a, is a, the president. It goes back to the same the Piper syndrome. So in other words, unless Tinubu is interested in a particular case, the EFCC and the ICPC will not be interested in such a case. And that's the tragedy. You know, so we need to have proper legal frameworks. And of course, you know, the number one, the number one uh, anti-corruption uh, agency in Nigeria is the legislature, the National Assembly and the State Assemblies. That is why I said that you have you have the uh, three major uh, functions of the legislature in a presidential democracy. One of those functions is oversight. The oversight is to um, be sure that the executive arm is uh, executing the appropriation act in line with the clear prescriptions of the of the of the act itself. This is not going on. The the legislators in Nigeria and the legislators themselves. The simple thing they do is to go to the executive arm to join in the contract bazaar. Mm. That is what they do. They join in the contract bazaar. They have companies, in, you, you know the case of uh, what you call a uh, constituency projects and all those things. Half of those constituency projects are not executed. Where they are executed, you know, over 90% of them were executed by companies either owned by the legislators or nominated by them. And so you can see that you can see that we really have a problem. The, 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 yes, I agree that the democracy is work in progress, but in which direction are we really moving? Who that is? That is a, you know, where are we going in, mm -hmm. in, in this manner that we are progressing? Because we are progressing in error. Mm. The constitution, the constitution needs to be amended comprehensively. To allow accountability, right? You know, even if, if, if you know, that would have made the work of setup and all that easier. If the if the law provides the prospect to which accountability will be accomplished, you know, you don't need to threaten anybody. All you need to do is to petition the appropriate headquarters uh, like EFCC and draw the attention to uh, the lacuna, the the, 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 the failure of the uh, governor. To submit to certain uh, processes, you don't get that. Look at the case of uh, of uh, yeah, I have been. It's very embarrassing, very very embarrassing. Mm -hmm. If you were there for eight years, if you if you if you if you have no case to answer, why are you running around like a white rat? Meanwhile, you told us you are white liar. This is the time to show courage. Mm -hmm. This is the time to show maturity. So where is pain? Now, the politics. For example, the IGP of police uh, withdrew the the uh, police orders of the uh, of bail. But I ask you, is that the appropriate step that should have been taken by the IGP? Mm -hmm. I thought IGP ought to order the ADC to arrest bail. Mm. Right. Now, now you you call the the woman back, call all the all the police officers back. To maybe a uh, uh, force headquarters to join in the band of the people who give bail. You do you see, do you see how we are mm -hmm. now. The ADC ordered a phone call from even the AIG in, in charge of a uh, of a uh, of a uh, zoom zoom arrest the bail. He does not enjoy any immunity anymore. Arrest bail is a direct order. The woman will simply salute Pelo saying, I'm sorry, in the life of duty, we are going to force second. It's very simple. But meanwhile, they call the woman back. And oh, they are now it. they are looking for Pelo. Mm. So well, what is that? I don't get it. You know, so you can see that the system is a it is a really contrived, is contrived in such a way as to just create more confusion than solution. <laughs> uh, because those who will offer solutions are not providing any solution. Look at what has happened in, uh, in the case of Ganduje, yeah, as the national uh, chairman of APIS. But how? How can you issue a, 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 an expert order against the, the, the national chairman of the ruling party? You know what expert order is? Expert order is given in the absence of the 
of a defensive petition they against because there is emergency. What is the emergency in uh, stopping uh, Ganduje? If you don't want to put him on notice, what is the what what, what mm -hmm. is the because that yeah, is the logic. Know. That's the logic behind expate order. Expate order is given by the judge to to, to, to prevent to prevent an emergency, to prevent to, to prevent a certain a, a damages from from being a cost. So what is the what is the logic justifying the expate order issued by a judge in Nigeria against the city a, 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 a national a chairman, of, chairman the, of the ruling party? Yeah. So you can you can see you can see politics everywhere. Mm -hmm. Politics are people's politics. I think we just need more accountability. To be honest, the, um, there is no accountability anywhere. That's why I brought in even the judiciary is gone also completely. Mm. And this is uh, this, uh, the, the, the example of Ganduje, we tell you. So, Doctor, where do we go from here in one minute? Because we have to wrap it up now. So, where do we go from you here? Know, what do we do? We, 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 we need to all uh, wake up. It's not just a matter of setup. Mm -hmm. I believe that uh, what is now left is the Nigerian masses taking their photo, their life, and their survival into their own hands. Mm -hmm. They just have to. There is no other way because the laws, the laws are not there. Even when the laws are there, they are not enforced. So what do you do? You mm. take the you you take your survival into your own hands. That's right. Because those yes, the NJC is there. They they can't control the judges, and the judges are just giving any manner of judgments. A judge told me that in uh, political matters that they they, they always uh, have a uh, two judgments. Mm -hmm. So it depends on the uh, eh? so you now bring out the one you think is the uh, huh? is that not is, is that not judgment for sale? Mm -hmm. Even so, you you have you have a judiciary that is no longer interested in justice. So it is the masses. We need to reconfigure the country. Mm -hmm. The country has to be reconfigured, and the people must rise to insist mm -hmm. that. The, 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 the country be recovered from uh, from from these people who call themselves our leaders. All right, this sir. is not leadership at all. This is not leadership. All right. At all levels, they have actually they, they, they have raped the economy. They have mm. raped the country. It's quite they have they, they don't want to be accountable to anybody, mm. and this must stop. All right, this is where we have to draw the curtain in this segment. Um, I mean, we've had all of the things that you said we need to rise up for our survival really we need to be able to hold these people accountable if we're asking for that we not just ask we have to demand for it so that we can have a better nigeria anyways i want to say thank you for coming dr law it was lovely having a conversation with you thank you thank you thank you so much thank you yeah have a blessed day nigerians you too sir all right, we've been speaking with Dr. Law before. He's a forensic and social psychologist. And we've been talking about the fact that Sarah has asked the 36 state governors and the minister of the FCT to, um, you know, just show documents or be transparent enough and accountable enough to show the documents dated from 1999 till date about the FAC allocations. We'll go on a short break. And when we return, we'll be talking about the demands by the Labour Congress. Please stay with us.